Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. All right, so this is part of our refresh and remake series where I take projects that I've made before, I simply remake them, and then I show you the original video. And it's just to give you an idea of other colors combinations that you can use, or maybe new charms that we've come up with, that sort of thing. So this is the triple wrap bracelet, and the original one was in silvers and greens. And this one, of course, is in beautiful tones of purple. And what I really love about this is that although purple is not one of my personal favorite colors, I know that it is a lot of my viewers' favorite color. And I get a lot of requests to make things in other colors other than blue and brown because I tend to do that a lot. So this one I have the, um, the middle stone is the 14 millimeter Dahlia in the plum mer mercury color. And then I have some bead caps on either side so they're a little different bead caps than in the original video but you can see that we've still got the same sort of thing on either side and then i have these large hole beads and then i also have a mercury one again this is the violet with mercury finish for our, um, six by eight rondelles and then i've also used on um, either side here i've used the thistle color and that got me to thinking of how nice this would look with the new tear cast thistle charm so I've used antique bronze tones with this and then the antique gray leather. And I really love how this paired up so super nicely. I just think this one is beautiful. So there are a couple differences in this one that you'll want to make note of if you are um, buying the kit. Or you can always just, you know, use whatever you've got. But if you want to buy this, it will be available in the kit form. So the differences when you're constructing this one is... Uh, on the original video, we attach the uh, charm directly to this um, little bridge of wire that I'm making. But on this one, the charm is actually going in a different direction. So we're going to be attaching it with a jump ring. So you don't want to attach it or the, directly or else it's going to end up this way. So in your kit, you would get a little jump ring and you would attach it there. The other difference is that I needed a different color of end cap and they no longer manufacture that other um, crimp pan that I was using. So I'm using a different style. They are slightly smaller, just ever so slightly, but, and this happens to be sort of a real juicy, big three millimeter um, leather. So I found what I had to do was kind of cut the ends on a little bit of a point. So instead of having a blunt cut, like where it was straight across, like in the other video, I cut it on a little bit of a point and then I had to kind of jiggle it up to get it inside here. So that's about the only differences is that you're going to have a, um, some different um, bead caps and you're going to attach your charm a little differently and then you're going to have to cut your ends a bit different. But I really hope that you love the color combination on this. It's something so out of my <laughs> comfort zone, but I think it turned out really, really nice. So I'm going to play the original video now so you can see how to construct yours and we'll see you on the next video. And thanks so much for watching. To make our bracelet today we're going to be using some three millimeter leather i've got some 20 gauge craft wire in a silver color and for beads i've got this beautiful new uh, check glass bead and this one is called a dahlia i think it's about a 14 millimeter and this one is in this beautiful silver that's got the mercury finish on it and i think it is so gorgeous and i also have one very similar in a rondelle so fabulous looking i think these ones are really really unique I also have another check glass rondelle that is sort of a sage green with a bit of a um, iridescent finish on it. I think these all pair up so nicely. And for my findings today, I have a little hook and you will seldom see me use something like this on my videos, but I thought let's try something a little different and see how it turns out. I also have a beautiful little charm, some of these three millimeter cord ends. I have a large jump ring. This is a 16 gauge. I also have some accent beads and some little uh, bead caps. And as far as tools today, we're just going to be using our regular four, our cutters, our bent chain nose pliers, our round nose pliers, and our chain nose pliers. 
So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut some wire and I'm probably going to cut about six to eight inches. I want to make sure I've got lots for this one. And I'm going to place my chain nose pliers at the top and I'm just going to sort of make sure that's nice and straight and I'm going to go down about two inches and I'm going to line that up and bend away just creating a nice sharp 90 degree angle. So now I'm going to come in about, I'm going to like, these are a long nose plier, but if you have a short nose, just go up a little bit because we do want a bit of a bigger loop. So I'm going to go up and over and straight down, open my plier, rotate it so it's parallel to the table. I'm going to bring that tail all the way to the back. And then I'm just going to kind of line that up to make sure we have a nice round loop. And now I'm going to place my little hook on there. So I'm just going to put that in there and then I'm going to wrap this up. Let's place my hook in wrap it up by going just twice and then I'm going to work my way back up to the top because I want that really sort of bulky look and this is also a good place to be imperfect if you happen to make that sort of messy looking then that's the way it's supposed to be just give that a trim and then I just double check to see if any burrs are sticking out and that one's kind of popped up a little bit so I'm just going to boss it back where I want it you're the boss of the wire, just make it go where you want. And that's what we want to start with. So now I'm going to place on my beads. So I've got my beautiful silver mercury check glass rondelle. And then I'm going to take my silver spacer. And then one of my bead caps. And then my beautiful sage green rondelle. And then another bead cap. And then this beautiful dahlia. Just love that. I think that's so stunning. And then repeat on the other side in reverse. So put on my sage with my bead caps and then my spacer and then my rondelle bead. So now we've got this beautiful run of beads. So now I want to um, make my next loop. So I want to make sure that it's going in the exact same direction. So what you can do is just sort of line it up like this so that I'm, I'm looking through it this way and I want it to go that same direction. So now I'm just going to bend straight down and now they will go in the same direction. So I'm gonna repeat like I did on the first one. So go back to the same spot, up, over, down, rotate, bring that to the back. And now you can see that's way over there. So I'm just bringing it back up on itself so that we end up with a round loop versus something that's kind of hanging out over the edge, which will create a bit of a P. So now before I do this up, I'm going to place this on here. So I've got my little charm and I'm just going to put it in sort of the barrel there. And then now I want to make sure that I put on one of these little end caps. All right, so now I'm going to do that up. So now make sure before you do it up that you've got your charm and then you've got your end cap. You want to have your end cap on the outside like that. So I'm going to go right across that and I'm going to wrap up. So I go down once or twice and then work my way back up. And it might be hard to see because there's so much metal there, but I'm just wrapping until I can't really wrap anymore. And then using the flush side of my cutter, I'm going to come in, give that a little trim. Turn it over, make sure that you don't have any burrs sticking out. And it is a little hard to get hold of all this because there's so many things in the way, but I can sort of see that sticking out there. And I'm gonna give that just a little smush down just to make sure that it's, there we go, so it's nice and soft. So now I'm gonna take my leather and I wanna make sure my end is sort of a blunt cut, which that one is, and I'm gonna put it in my crimp end. So what I do is I make sure that it's pushed up enough so that I can see it and then I pull back just a little tiny bit because I don't want to see my leather there. Now you want this to go in the natural flow because this is going to be sort of a wrap bracelet. So you don't want to have it like this on the side and then have that coming out. You can see now the flow goes that way. It just won't be very nice on. So you always, always want to make sure that you're going in the natural flow of the leather. Now we do have two different kind of crimps on the website. These are the, I think they're like PAS162 or something like that. I can't remember the code. But these are a little bit more heavy duty than the other ones that we carry. So they are pricier, but you can kind of tell the difference. They are beautiful. And I think these ones come from Israel or something. They're just a beautiful um, finding. So now you only want to crimp in the midsection. You never want to crimp these outside ones. So you're just going to take your tool and just squish on the middle. So I just kind of do a little bit and I go back and forth. 
I find that you can't do it all in one fell swoop. And if your pliers don't have a, a pointy enough thing, you can always use your bent chain nose because those tend to have a bit more of a pointy end and you can kind of just go in there like that. So, you know, just make your tools work for you. There we go. So now we have to do a little bit of fitting before we complete this bracelet. So the way that it's gonna go on is it's gonna lay on the side like that. So what I wanna do is I wanna place this on my wrist and I'm gonna mold it to my wrist. I'll show you right now. Like So that's the way it is and you can see that it sort of sticks up and it's not very attractive looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mold that to my wrist a little bit. Get everything the way I want it. There we go, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna wrap this around my wrist twice. Now it's kind of, <laughs> It's, nothing ever works easy on camera. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping one in front and one in the back, and then I want to have this finish so that um, when I put this on the end, I'll be able to do it up. Now I have a larger wrist, so this piece of leather isn't really long enough to really kind of show you, but we'll make sure that we give you enough so that if you've got a, a larger wrist, you it will work. But I pre-cut this yesterday and then I realized, oh, that's not gonna fit me for on camera but I mean, it barely would. So what I wanna do is I'm going to place my, I know this sounds a little crazy, it's backwards, but I'm going to take this large jump ring and I'm using this one because it's, I wanna have an, a round ring on the end, but I needed something that I could open. So that's why we're using this really heavy duty one. So I'm gonna place it through there and then tighten that up really well. Just jiggle back and forth until it becomes sort of seamless. And now you can take this and place it on the end here. And you could kind of dry fit this a little bit in that you can now take this and place it on your wrist and then wrap it around. I'm sorry, it's hard to try to do all of this on camera and not have it falling down and you know, <laughs> everything goes the wrong way when you're trying to do it on camera. But once you play around with things yourself, it's a whole lot easier at home. Okay, so I'm trying to get this so that you guys can see, but you know, it's just not cooperating today. But basically, I'm gonna go around twice there until that meets up to be able to go in there. So you wanna, you don't wanna have this tight. So it may take a little bit of playing around. So I hope this hasn't really been confusing for you as far as trying to figure out the, the uh, measurements for the length. Really this little piece on the end here is only gonna add an extra quarter inch. So I would wrap it around my wrist the three times to make sure that it's gonna meet up sort of figure out where it's going to be comfortable and then trim a little bit on the long side and try it one more time and then put on your crimp. It's just kind of hard because I don't have extra leather at my house here. It drives me crazy when I'm trying to make projects and I don't have enough stuff here. So I had a little bit of a shorter piece, but you can kind of get the idea. So again, we're going to come in here and making sure I've got this going in the same direction as the other one in that it's the natural flow. So I'm going to place that on and then I'm going to crimp this up. And so give it a little little smush on either side or come in here with my bent chain nose, which I really love using for so many things. These are so versatile and I can't imagine making jewelry without them. So there you go, there's the completed bracelet. I love how quickly this came together and how striking it looks. And you can see it just does up really super easily with that hook and you just pop it into that ring on the end there. So it's really easy to get on compared to a lot of bracelets. And it's got that gorgeous leather look as a nice accent. I think this one's so fabulous. And of course, those colors are really speaking to me. So and as always, this will be available in kit form. To access the kits, you just go into the description box below this video and it will take you to my website and it's fully secure and safe for shopping. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from everybody and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I wanna thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.